Hello everyone, welcome back to the CIA video series for this book. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at chapter 10, which was focused on Linux kernel exploitation. Now, as I said, we've now moved on from uh, Windows uh, privilege escalation techniques, and we're now moving into Linux uh, privilege escalation techniques. So the first technique, as I said, is Linux kernel exploitation. So uh, the first thing that you need to do, as I mentioned within this chapter, is actually set up your target virtual machine. Now, in this case, the target virtual machine is uh, called Stapler. Now, Stapler is a vulnerable uh, operating system, Linux operating system that is uh, available on VulnHub. Uh, the link to this particular virtual machine is posted uh, in the book uh, resources and in this particular chapter uh, resources, especially when you take a look at the section that covers uh, the process of setting it up. So you can download it directly from here and it's uh, 700 megabytes. And uh, once you've downloaded the files, uh, you need to extract the zip folder. It's simply called stapler.zip. There we are. And you can see it's gonna give you three files. Uh, disregard this file here. Uh, but more specifically, it's going to give you an OVF file, which is uh, which stands for Open Virtualization Format. Uh, if, so if you right click on this, you can say Open with VirtualBox Manager, and that is going to prompt up the import wizard. So you can change the name of the virtual machine to Stapler, uh, and then you can specify the machine base folder or where this particular uh, VM will actually be stored. So you can specify that option as well. In my case, I've already imported it, so I don't need to do that. Um, so then you need to add this particular VM to the virtual hacking lab network that we created. So you go into settings and you then head over into network and you want to make sure that it is attached. Your adapter is attached to the NAT network and the name of course is going to be virtual hacking lab that we set up, right? So now that that's done, you can then start up the target uh, virtual machine now that we have that set up and uh, we can then begin. So I'm just going to let this start up just to make sure that everything's fine. Let me just expand that. And uh, you can see that it boots up just fine. And um, given the fact that our network has DHCP set up, it should automatically assign this with an IP address. Um, so again, just going to give that a few seconds to start up. All right, so it started up and you can see it uh, automatically takes us to the login screen here. So we know that it's running successfully. We can now head over into the Kali VM to begin uh, the privilege escalation process. So I'll see you there. All right, so we can begin with the kernel exploitation process on Linux. Now, uh, again, the first thing, as I said, that you want to do is in, uh, essentially obtain an initial foothold on the target system. And uh, this can be done by following the instructions uh, or the actual link that will provide you with the instructions and how to do that. Uh, that was actually highlighted in the actual introduction section uh, of this particular chapter. So once you have an initial foothold, uh, you'll probably have an unprivileged user like, um, for example, www.data, uh, which is again the user, the uh, service account responsible for uh, essentially management and isolation of the web server data uh, and this is the default configuration for apache all right so there are two ways we can go about doing this one of them as i said is the process of um, using the metasploit module to essentially enumerate kernel exploits and uh, the module of course in this case is the exploit suggester so we can put this in the background there we are and we can search for exploit uh, suggester like so and you can see it's going to bring up the module there and we'll say use paste that in there if we show the options uh we can set the session so sessions uh set session uh set session one we then hit run that's going to try and identify um some that is going to try and identify some potential exploits and then of course we can identify any kernel exploits there um, so again, we'll just let that uh, complete running, which is going to take a few uh, a few seconds to a few minutes, and uh, we can then begin the privilege escalation process. And let's see whether this will work uh, if we use, uh, or you know, let's see if this will work if we if we do this automatically with Metasploit, uh, because there's a point to be uh, to actually be made here. So again, I'll just come back when this is done. All right, so this tells us that there were no local exploits found for this particular for this particular version of Linux. Well, in in, in many cases, 
it probably will fail because of the meta interpreter session that we're currently using. Um, so that's no problem. Uh, we can work around this by performing manual kernel exploitation, which is what I wanted to highlight um, in the first place, right? So manual kernel exploitation. Let's get into our session one here. And, uh, you know, we can spawn a shell. And you can see that's not going to give us any uh, any uh, shell to use. So if we hit LS, you can see it, it provides us with a very basic command shell. Now, the way we can work around this is by, uh, of course, trying to uh, essentially spawn a new shell. Uh, and of course, this can be done uh, through a variety of techniques. I'll show you a few here. Um, so let me just uh, do that for you. Um, so if Python is installed on the target, we can essentially use the following command here to provide us with a bash session. So I'm just going to paste that in there and uh, let's see if that works. And indeed we get a, um, we get a bash session now. So we're currently working within the, uh, the default working directory for the user www data, right? So the first thing we want to do is enumerate some information about the system that we're working on. Um, so if I say you name a, you can see it's going to tell us the host name, uh, the kernel version. We know we're running Ubuntu. So let's try and find out what version of Ubuntu we're running. So cat Etsy release and uh, you can see we're running ubuntu 16.04 xenial or 16.04 lts right so uh, if we use search exploit really quickly here i'm just gonna head over onto my home directory here so we say search exploit and then we say ubuntu 16.04 uh, this will help us identify a potential uh, kernel exploit let's let me actually drag this here and we can search for that again so that the information is displayed uh, you can see we're able to identify quite a few um, exploits. Uh, one of a few of them are actually Metasploit modules, uh, but we're looking for kernel exploits. And of course, it's going to list out the kernel here if it is a kernel exploit. And uh, in our case, um, you can see that our kernel version is, uh, let's see, the 4.4.0. Uh, um, so let's see if we can find that one here. So there we are. We get this one here, which is for our particular version. So 4.4.0. Uh, uh, this is the one here, but that's a 64-bit exploit. And our target is a 32-bit operating system. So we're going to have to perform a bit more uh, enumeration. But uh, regardless, this is a great way of actually trying to identify exploits. Um, right, so that now that we've taken a look at um, at you, how to use search exploit, uh, we can take a look at how to use the uh, Linux exploit suggester or linpeas. Uh, but in this case, let's uh, let's actually use linpeas because linpeas will enumerate quite a bit of information. So I'll just close that up, and uh, if we go into the temp directory, so tmp. Uh, we can prop we can primarily work from here so uh, linpeas uh, again can be downloaded uh, through the link provided within this particular chapter in my case i'm pretty sure i have it on my desktop here under um, linux enum and uh, you can actually see uh, we have linpeas.sh so i'm just gonna i'm going to set up a web server uh, to serve this particular file using the python module simple http server so simple http server and then we'll host it on port 80 and then we can transfer it onto the target wget and we say http there we are and that's how to transfer files onto a linux target so we'll put in my kali ip and we're essentially looking for linpeas.sh so linpeas.sh that looks like it's done and we can close this particular terminal now uh, we need to provide it with executable permissions so linpeas.sh and then we say linpeas.sh and that's going to start enumerating information however there is a key thing to note here that we don't want all the information that is going to enumerate right uh, so what we'll do is uh, if we can actually just spawn another uh, shell session here and let me just get a bash uh, shell on the target uh, so let me try and paste that in there. Um, so that should actually provide us with it there. Um, let's see, is that working? Uh, yes, that is working. We can just import it really quickly. So Python uh, C import uh, pty and then we say um, pty.spawn and we want a bash session. So that's under bin bash 
and um, yeah, we can essentially execute it like so. Hit enter, we get a bash session. Let's head over to the temp directory again. We still have the file there, so that's perfectly fine. So we want to limit the output similar to WinPs to only display system information, right? So this can be done by, of course, running linpeas.sh, and then we want to limit the output to um, system information. So that's done. That can be done by saying sys. Uh, sorry, that is uppercase S, sys, and then up, uppercase I. We hit enter, and it's going to look for kernel exploits here. Um, so we give that a few seconds. Uh, you can see that enumerates, uh, well, that actually just displays the system information. We still have to identify the kernel exploits uh, with Linux Exploit Suggester. You can see it tells us the kernel version here, which is great. Um, and of course, gives us the GCC version if it's installed. That'll be useful if we want to compile our exploits. So now that we've got, we have actually confirmed our kernel version, we can actually transfer the exploit suggester tool. Uh, so I'll just head over to desktop, uh, Linux enum, and I have the Linux uh, exploit suggester, that's les.sh. And what I'll do is I'll actually just serve this particular directory. And we can then use wget again. So wget http uh, 10, 10, 10, 5, and we're looking for less.sh. I hit enter. And uh, we can now close this again, although we're not going to need it again. So chmod uh, plus x less.sh. And then we can execute it. So less.sh, we hit enter. Uh, that's going to enumerate a list of kernel exploits. Um, so uh, again, in, at this particular point, the most important thing to do now is to perform research based on your target, right? And uh, in the book, we were able to identify that the double FD put exploit was the one or well, was actually the one that we were able to have success with um so again what we need to do now is uh, again try and identify uh, exploit code for this particular cve so we can open up firefox here and uh, we are just going to search uh, we can actually just use Go uh, google uh, hacking or some google docs so we'll, we'll limit this to exploit db.com as that'll provide us with the best uh, search results in terms of the exploits uh, that we'll actually find. So there we are, exploit DB. Um, we click on that. We're looking for the double FD put exploit, right? And this provides us with the exploit code. Um, and as I said, again, we can also run the same search uh, with search exploit. Um, so what we can do uh, again is try and identify the actual instructions for running this particular exploit. Uh, however, I don't think this is uh, the actual, um, let's see if this provides us with the uh, the running instructions. Yes, this is the one here. Right, so um, in terms of running the exploit, all we need to do is download uh, the exploit code, right? And then we need to, uh, we need to actually compile it, right? So um, we can actually just uh, download it directly. So I'm just going to say download and uh, that is the txt file but uh, we need the exploit code here so i think we can run it with search exploit so if i say search exploit um and uh, you know we try and identify the actual code uh so if i say search exploit linux kernel 4.4 uh let's see if we're able to identify the, that particular exploit uh here so i'll just run that again uh, so that it actually displays it clearly. Um, can I actually find it here? We can actually grep the results. So grep uh, FD and uh, let's see if that actually there, that's the one there. So, uh, right. So the next thing we need to do, as I said now, is actually download the exploit. Um, so uh, we can actually download the exploit from, uh, we can actually search for the exploit here. So uh, we can get rid of that. And sorry, let me just type in exploit correctly here. We can search for the exploit itself, but I already have the link to the actual uh, exploit code. Um, so let me just uh, bring that up here so I can actually display that. Um, so we can look for binary exploits. So let me just paste in that link there, paste and go. So we have binary uh, exploits. And this contains a list of, um, of exploit binaries, and we're looking for the exploit code. Uh, which I think is 39772. So 39772 uh, is that listed here? 
Uh, I don't think it's actually listed here. Let, let's actually go through it. Uh, let's see if we can actually find it here. So 3.9, that should be under 3. Um, um, that's not being listed here. Um, so I think what we'll need to do is just actually copy the exploit, uh, the exploit, uh, the exploit link, which I provided in the book. Uh, but I th it should actually be within this link because this is the actual source of the exploit code. Uh, let me see if I can still find it here. We should be able to identify it. But if you, if you aren't able to identify it this way, just use the link in the book to transfer it over to the target. Um, so I'm just going to close this here. And we'll say wget and we paste in that here. And uh, there we are. It's downloaded the, the zip file. So we'll say unzip. Uh, three nine. Um, we can actually just type it in seven seven two dot zip. That's going to exploit it, and we now have the actual folder. So it's, uh, we can actually change our directory into that. So three nine seven seven two, uh, and we have exploit dot tar right. So um, we have the crasher dot tar and exploit dot tar, but we want to work with the exploit. So we're going to say tar extract file, and we then say exploit dot tar. That's going to extract it for us. And we have the uh, EBPF ex uh, double put exploit. So if we list out here um, the file type, you can see that that is a directory. So CD, uh, we can actually just uh, copy the file name here. So that's uh, much easier. And then if we list the files in here. We have the exploit code, right? Um, so in order for us to, um, to actually use this, we need to run the compilation script uh, and that is uh, right over here so compile.sh so we need to say chmod plus x compile.sh um, and then we say uh, compile.sh we want to run that so that's going to compile it for us um, let's see if we have any errors there uh, looks like we have a few but we have the double put binary so we can now run the double put binary so i'm just going to say chmod plus x uh, double put uh, double put sorry that let me just correct that and we can then try and run it and uh, let's see if that actually works if that works we should actually get a root session so we'll give that a few seconds here uh, so there we are uh, we should have a root shell in less than 60 seconds. So let's give that 60 seconds and it's going to say we have root privs now and we've successfully been able to elevate our privileges to the user root. So if I type in ID, you can see we have uh, we have root privileges and uh, we've uh, been able to elevate our privileges uh, successfully. So again, this was a, uh, a very good demonstration of how uh, automatic kernel exploitation with Metasploit can fail and you should always be able to uh, perform enumeration using the various enumeration tools that I've covered in, in this particular chapter. And of course, uh, one of the best uh, tools or enumeration tools is the Linux Exploit Suggester, as it'll actually give you a list of exploits that are uh, that will uh, have a good chance of working for that particular uh, distribution uh, ID or the actual distribution type. In this case, it was uh, Ubuntu and the kernel version. And then, of course, I've uh, taken you through the process of identifying the, the correct exploit, the exploit code, compiling the exploit, and of course, then running the exploit to uh, obtain root privileges. Um, so that's going to be it for this video, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.